Hi. In this video, we are going to see a use case related to alert management rules. This is a continuation of my previous video. Uh, if you have missed it, please see that video. The link is in description. Um, here I am going to explain how to create an incident out of an alert. Okay. Uh, it's a very simple out of the box use case, which I am just going to uh, show you how it works and where you can debug it if it is not working. Then I have created another use case where I am going to show you how to trigger a PowerShell script on a particular machine to gather its CPU details or, or the memory uses, CPU uses, the process uses uh, details of that particular server. Uh, again, using flow design. So that is my custom made uh, use case basically. You can have your own use cases as per your requirement. So without wasting time, let's get started. I will show you, I have created this particular management tool where I have given some information. I have given a condition like severity is critical. And if the CI map with the alert is uh, of ESX host, and if it contains 90% additional information, then only create or, or apply this particular rule. And if you're applying this rule, what should happen? Create an incident out of it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use Postman to create a event into service now. I have already created a few uh, JSON sample for this, which I will I have put into my uh, article. With, again, the link is in the description. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple event. You can see criticality that this severity is one. The host is ESX host and it contains 90%. Send. As soon as I send it, we can see it here in, let's go to all events. You can see the event is created. Alert is created. And if I open the alert, let's wait to see if the task is automatically populated or not. It should be automatically populated. You can see it is automatically populated. Um, this is how the rule is applied because the condition was satisfied and there is no other rule for testing. So this rule is applied. If you have an order of rules, then the order decides which rule is applied. If you want to debug these alert executions, you need to go to alert executions, which are attached here. And you can see the, the rule, which was applied, the action name, which was configured and the context of that flow design. Okay. Uh, along with the related task, which was the output of this particular context. Straightforward, you can also create changes, problems, task-based records, but usually most of the organizations create an incident out of another. There was one another unique case uh, where people wanted to have a quick response here, like just open a record like this. Once you click on open a record, it will open this task based record. They also wanted one more thing that is close record, close the associated record. So that also you can create as soon as you click on it, you will get navigated to a incident and it will get resolved automatically based upon your, uh, based upon your response. It's, it's just a, a use case basically, but you can, if you close the alert automatically, the incident is going to close out of the box. Let's move ahead. I will show you another use case where I'm going to trigger a PowerShell command using flow designers on a configuration item to bring the CPU details. So the purpose be behind doing this use case is let's say uh, midnight you get alert that your critical server is uh, approaching 90% usage or 95% usage. And if you want to uh, extend the memory size, extend the RAM, something. Um, then what you have to do is you have to configure, uh, you have to you have to configure few orchestration tasks and trigger those orchestration tasks. So without manual uh, or human intervention, your alert is resolved automatically. So that was the purpose, but I can't uh, show you the extending of memory right now, uh, but I will show you how to trigger a PowerShell script and at least bring back uh, the CPU details of that particular CI. So let's go ahead. Uh, I have created a rule. You can see this rule. I have created it. I am just going to activate this rule. 
create here you can see the type is event source is postman and what happens it should trigger a powershell command execution both i will show you why i have given both and then the flow is another link which is automatically populated as soon as you give this let's get started uh, i will quickly create another event i will show you the body it's like this send let's go here you can see the uh, event is created let's wait for the alert to get generated yeah uh, alert is also generated now i'm going to open the alert great here you can see 90 is in the message key as well as in the description yeah as well as you can see now uh, the alert rule is executed trigger powershell and let's go to activities here you can see all the cpu details are automatically um, not exactly CPU details, but the process details which are running on that particular uh, machine uh, are added automatically to the work notes. So th this can help our organization to uh, or our people to see at least, okay, when this alert came, what was the detail about that particular machine? Uh, as I sh as I told you that there can be different different cases. You need you can have a case of restart a server, extend the RAM of the server. So you can configure those. Now, why? I gave this execution as both because I wanted it to be visible in quick responses. So in quick responses, you can see I can create an incident because there is no uh, task record associated with it. And I can also trigger a PowerShell again. So why I have given both, let's say uh, an operator starts working on this particular alert. And if you want to get a real time data now, because this this data was, uh, let's say yesterday's old data, one day ago data. And if you want the current data, then he can go to quick responses. He can click on this. As soon as you click on this, you will get navigated to the flow designer. And according to the schedule job, this flow will be attached. As soon as the flow gets attached, you can see it is running in progress. And at the same time, you can see the alert execution here, right? And that alert execution this is this clearly shows that you have executed it manually and this shows you have executed uh, it was executed automatically right and now you can see another details so uh, you can see it was 99 87 so even if you trigger it manually you are going to get the same results uh, now the uniqueness of this particular uh, use case is uh, sometimes organizations have tremendous automation they want they have chef they have ansible towers so you can integrate the ansible uh, apis you can integrate the chef apis you can automatically start a service stop a service start a server stop a server you can also install some packages if you have a ccm uh, there if you want to reinstall it then that also you can do you can add uh, ad objects you can create ad objects you can delete users from ad you can do password reset everything is possible using the quick responses the biggest advantage of doing alert management rule is first your uh, availability is high automatically because you, if you get a uh, alerts in the midnight um, they get automatically resolved you don't need any manual intervention second using alert management rules you you can avoid creation of incidents for secondary alerts there will be only an incident for primary alerts so which reduces the incident noise in your system third less overheads for the operators and the fourth uh, is auto remediation in this world of automation uh, automation we these are really helpful and the last one which i really see is your high ability of infrastructure which all the clients are interested in right so these two videos this one and the previous one which is in description describes the journey of alert management rules please see these videos if you have any questions drop them in the into comments and i will get back to you as soon as possible thanks see you again